Greetings, nerds, and it's Dean the Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. It's 2021. Yes. 2021. We made it, somehow. <laughs> are you getting Arrow shows this week or next week? Uh, that woman comes back next week, the 17th. Yeah, a week from today. Yes. A week from today. And more importantly, arguably, um, Wanda comes out this week. That's right. That's right. We get the first two episodes Love this it. Friday. Yeah, so uh, it's a nine-episode season, but um, it was confirmed that they're going to do uh, – the first episodes one and two this Friday, and then they'll be released weekly uh, to finish out the run. One, two, three, wait. So it starts there. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Huh. I wonder if that means Falcon Winter Soldier will drop like the following week because that's supposed to drop in March. That's right. So that will take us right to it. Yeah. Oh, Marvel, I love you. Yep. <laughs> that, I love you so much. <laughs> they, yeah, yeah. I was reading today. I think uh, Feige and some of the showrunner, other uh, showrunners from WandaVision had a, a Zoom call today about the show and uh, talking about, uh, Feige actually even talked about, you know, getting inspired by The Mandalorian, having that weekly release of of the show to, to keep it keep the buzz going instead of dropping it all at once and and i i appreciate that actually because i what one of the shows that we're going to talk about here shortly uh with cobra kai season three you know i did binge it except for all but one episode and and i and, and then thinking with mandalorian and even the boys uh but i i, I really and back to the place where I, I do like having that weekly release so I can like actually process and and, and enjoy the show and, and really take it all in instead of trying to, you know, instead of slamming through it. I go back and forth on it. I mean, binge, binge watching shows. I personally love, I also have the time to do that. Will you not know so much? Yeah. Um, but I also I also agree with you. There, there was a there was this time when before streaming services when shows would air once a week mm-hmm. and then go on a hiatus and and you would it, like event television um, yeah. you make a point of watching one thing over another and so I I think that um, streaming services under these new models and knowing where we are with the state of movies. I think it's very important for um, the series that are going straight to the streaming services to kind of um, not be dropped all at once. That way people are not watching a movie, realizes how much it sucks, and then immediately canceling their subscriptions because (laughs) they'll have a TV show that is they're only halfway through. Right, right. Uh, I yeah. think that did happen this week, but I'm not, I'm, I may be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the other thing too, I mean, there are some shows that lend itself where you, where you can binge and it doesn't take anything away from it. But then there's others that, that really like the boys, for example, you know, or even Mandalorian where it's like, okay, it's, it's, it's good to have it, that weekly release of the show. So, but but yeah, but, but getting back to WandaVision, uh, so far it seems that I guess folks who have had early screenings of it seem to seem to like it. Uh, I've heard positive buzz about it, so uh, uh-huh. it's definitely definitely weird and and def- that definitely uh, um, not uh, you know it, you know it could either be really good or it could be really bad. We'll just I guess we'll find out start, starting this Friday. My gut tells me it's not going to be really bad. Yeah. But that's just, and, my, and I've felt that way ever since it was announced and then there were discussions. Actually, I think even when it was announced, because they made it a point of saying how that show would tie into Doctor Strange 2. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, 
which has the coolest name ever, um, The Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, that is a great title. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in other in other news, CW has passed on Green Arrow and the Canaries, which I I mean, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I if if they had dropped this will, I would have been like, you're gonna watch the first episode. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's one of those things that uh, as time progressed, it was getting clear. That it was probably not going to get picked up, even though even though they said that they did, they were not going to pick up the canaries. I saw where uh, I guess the prequel for the 100. I know that's a show you watched uh, may get picked up by HBO Max, but uh, but I don't think that's in the cards for Green Arrows and the Canaries. Oh, I hope not. I didn't watch um, a single episode of the final se- season of the 100. It got so bad. Did it? So bad. I I find it fascinating how series can start off one way and then just progress to this point where you're just like uh, that. It's everything you have now taken everything that I loved about it mm-hmm. and just thrown it out the window because you you clearly just wanted to have seasons for the sake of seasons. Oh, zero season eight. <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. Um. Yeah, well, it's funny because I, I, you know, when I saw the news about Green Arrow and the Canaries, at the the two highest rated episodes for for that eighth season was obviously Crisis and this backdoor pilot for for this show. Uh, so, uh, and, and you know, we we've talked about Steven and and how basically he was he was just you know going. Chase going for the check for that that eight, eight season, uh, just to as, as on the Michael Rosenbaum podcast. So it's you know I, I, there was, yeah, there were a couple of storylines that maybe they could pick them up in some of the other series as far as like what happened to William and and, and but uh, but at the end of the day, I think it, the Arrowverse or CW verse as they are trying to call it now. Which I think even more so now, given that they passed on this particular show, uh, it they're definitely going in a different direction. And I think some of our legacy shows, you know, Flash is going to be probably ending before we know it. And these the other shows that we've talked about uh, coming online in the future will will carry it forward, assuming that uh, there's still an appetite for it. Yeah. It it is weird how there's been an announcement that Supergirl this is their last season and yet the Flash there's there's been no hints that this is their last season so right. it's it's interesting because it, I would have I would have expected Grant to one out sooner rather than later but but maybe he um likes the paychecks right now so yeah maybe <laughs> maybe and and maybe they'll maybe whenever they'll continue it and when the flash movie which i think is finally going to start going to production this year uh maybe that'll sort of be a way that they can end their the tv run as they as they go to the feature film Mm. um I don't know how to transition from this because we've been on our own little hiatus. So I'm just going to say it because Will apparently wants to talk about this. The Sex and the City revival (laughs) is coming to HBO Max, um, which I think is a little bit interesting because I know that they are getting ready to drop the revival of Gossip Girl, (laughs) which I didn't even know was a thing until I started seeing set photos. And I did watch Gossip Girl back in the day. Um, pretty much generally most of the seasons, um, Chuck and Blair forever. But I just, what is HBO Max doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's what, like, are they, re, 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 why is it just revival after revival? And yet you and I went crazy for a lot of their original content this summer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know why they are going back to the well. And I guess with the sex in the city, Revival. Everybody's coming back. I think Kim Cattrall is not going to be a part of it. Uh, but 
Yeah, I think it's like a limited series run. And you're right. They, they have so many good new programs coming online. Like, and, and so I assume there's still an appetite for it, I guess. Maybe instead of trying to do another feature film with this cast, they're like, okay, we can go to this reliable story show that you know still has a lot of fans out there and just and 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 drop it on the streaming platform again trying to get eyeballs to it so maybe that's part of the motivation maybe i mean in my opinion gossip girl makes a little bit of sense because it would be targeted probably at a at a younger audience Mm -hmm. and and then you also still have the a little bit of the generation who watched the previous one sex in the city i mean what is I, i've never understood this franchise and i understand a it was before my time the movies i don't think did that great i no. think they, they did well enough to get a sequel but still it kind of bombed more or less yeah and now they're doing a revival and it's not like gossip girl gossip girl is a clear reboot mm-hmm. yeah this so, is just yeah this huh. is like a yeah. This is like revival, sequel, nostalgia trip. Maybe again, like I said, I think it could just be one of those things where they just want they're trying to get eyeballs to HBO Max and and it, and this particular IP did have a very significant following uh, in, in its heyday. So maybe they're just like hoping lightning will get captured in a bottle again and we'll we'll get subscribers to to come check this particular show out yeah i i think though if i understand the headlines over the last few weeks following the release of wonder woman i don't think hbo max it's about getting subscribers they still have yet to figure out how to retain those subscribers true true and this is Um, the way they can do it because because it, it was pretty clear that I, I guess everyone purchased their subscription, watched Wonder Woman 2, and immediately canceled their subscription. Yeah. It's like, wait, there's more. <laughs> Which, that this movie, Wonder Woman 2, 1984, we, it is targeted as a, at a younger demographic. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming that a lot of the families with, probably girls and and boys too between the ages of six to 10, they probably didn't already have a subscription. Um, And if they did, it was probably under parental controls. Yeah. But so them kind of like, well, we, we want it so that they can watch this one movie, but we're not going to retain it um, because there's nothing else that we can watch. Unlike Disney plus, which, has all of the kid content under the sun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I guess but I guess even on HBO Max though, they do have like Cartoon Network and some of oh, the yeah. other platforms that you can go to under under the HBO Max umbrella. So I you know, I, I think it's just you know, I think Disney had two things working in their huge favor. One uh, the Mandalorian first season really was a, a, a real thing that brought Star Wars fans back into the fold after many of them were upset after the rise of Skywalker. And, and so it was, you know, so I think it, you know, it created a lot of goodwill. And then I think the pandemic, and I think they were very smart in dropping Hamilton last summer because it was, to, to ride that wave of that very popular musical and you know they had planned on airing that fi- that film in the theater i think this year but uh they were smart and getting that on last summer and i think you know from that point forward people really bought into the platform and, and kept their subscriptions because then they, they they had you know time to cultivate other original content and and then, of course, um, you know, of course, as you said, the, the library that they have. And right after, you know, and shortly after Hamilton, even though it wasn't as, I don't think it did as well as they had hoped. I mean, you also had the Milan release. 
So, you know, there were some other incentives to keep for people to keep their Disney Plus subscriptions. Whereas, like now, you're right. I mean, unless you really have a deep dive or, or a real need for um, some of the other offerings on HBO, uh, there's really not that thing that says, oh, I must keep my HBO Max subscription. Yeah, but I think Hamilton, because there wasn't really any immediate. I mean, it took them the first week of September, I believe that's when Mulan dropped. Yeah. Um, you did have Beyonce drop um, Black as King at the end sure. of July. Yeah. But I, I still think even then people wanted to rewatch Hamilton mm -hmm. and all the shade in the world. Very few people want to rewatch Wonder Woman 1984. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I plan to. <laughs> it is daunting to want to rewatch it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know we were we were planning all. I know our original plan was to do a, a commentary rewatch of of it together, and <laughs> your response was, "It's painfully long." <laughs> know what it was i mean i feel like the run times are very similar between the two movies mm -hmm. but man watching 1984 was pulling teeth it was just yeah. okay i see what you're doing okay now we're gonna get this scene that i've already seen a dozen times in the trailer okay and then that'll lead to this scene and and why are they still talking? Why are we still trying to convince him to renounce his wish? What is this two and a half hour Pedro Pascal monologue? Which I love Pedro Pascal. He's he. The th interesting thing about this movie, I don't blame any of the actors. <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> not even Kristen Wiig. I get it. I get all the comparisons. I think she made, for the first time ever, she actually made that stereotype work. I, I liked Barbara. The writing was just atrocious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it, it was a very, you know, and I, and I tried, I tried not to let some of the early bad reviews, uh, color my color my viewing of it so uh, yeah because it came out christmas day i think i watched it i guess saturday or yeah, yeah or sunday after you know so it's only been you know so i hadn't had a chance to really let the negative vibes like you know really sink in or anything yet but as i was watching it you know whenever the very beginning of the film we you know we were back at the mascara and and you know, I, I did like the the Olympics sort of the games that they were they were having at the very beginning of the film. It did, and, and it, of course, it it got the vibe from some of the vibe from the, from the first film that we had just that we had just rewatched just a week before. So you know, so so I had you know, so that that definitely like had I, I had some goodwill going into the film. I and I and that, that th those. Callbacks to to her home work for me, and then we go to that bad opening in the mall. I can't the the mall from that from what from the from the point of the mall forward. I that it it was really hard to watch that film. Yeah, it's, it, that's where it it lost me because because it was just so many things about it. I mean, it, it was just um. The, the stunt work, the just the whole premise of like how she dealt with the, the jewel thieves, and it was just it was just bad. Yeah, it. I, so famous Gera is interesting because during our rewatch of the first one, um, and I, which I'm still glad we did because mm -hmm. it kind of it kind of made me better prepared for um being critical of this one in a way yeah. yeah like if you thought these were weak spots in the first one just you wait <laughs> 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 it's not gonna fix it um but famous Gira, 
I think it worked well in the first one because it was, we spent 40 minutes there. Mm-hmm. 40 minutes. We spent five minutes, which was, and when it came out that the studio didn't want to include that scene, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get it now. Complete, because yeah. it felt so tacked on. And And what really pissed me off in that scene was that the tie-in was so loose. It was, they could have done something so much better. Mm-hmm. They they did such a disservice to Diana yeah. because she she learned a lesson that you can't cheat to win. Okay. Um, I never thought of her as a cheater. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like there was this, it was very, it was very, um, thin how they loop that in and I just as soon as she said it I'm like oh god <laughs> oh no <laughs> and and to your point yeah I completely agree the mall se- se- sequence you're just like what am I watching <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, yeah what is this <laughs> this is so weird and and then it, it kind of got a little bit better for me because mm-hmm. again I I Barbara Kristen Wiig, she worked fine for me. I don't have yeah. a problem with. I actually kind of appreciated. She she unknowingly makes this wish to be like Diana, yeah. and then starts to get these powers. And I was like, oh, that's cool mm-hmm. because then she essentially is an Amazonian in her own right. They they destroy that whole concept. As soon as she says, I want to be an apex predator, and you're like, wait, what? Huh? How How do you get, you, you're already powerful. What? Huh? Yeah. It's just, and and we haven't even talked about Steve and Diana. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I'm with you there on Kristen Wiig. I, I, I actually, you're right, that overplay trope that, um but that she played in this film it she 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 did make it work and you know granted it's something that we see a lot of in these types of in this genre and um and others as well but it it it, it given how all, all all over the place this film was to begin with <laughs> this was the one like three line that actually uh did make sense and and and, and was actually believable uh, as far as seeing her growth up until the point where she, you know, she does, she is on the plane with Maxwell Lord and asking for, you know, that uh, last, that, that, that additional wish to, to become the, the, the cheetah, which, um, which, you know, the, you know only, the only thing that I can explain how I can explain that wish is that they made it clear all of the wishes had a negative consequence. Mm-hmm. And with Barbara, the longer she was, um, her wish went on, the, the, it, it, it reduced her humanity. So everything that my, made Barbara who she was, it reduced that. Yeah. So the her desire to then become an apex predator, well, it's because all of your good qualities, all of your compassion... Um, is wiped away. But yeah. even again, I'm kind of tripping on my words because it's just, it they it could have been written better. It could have been. It could, yeah, it, it totally could have been. And, I mean, well, the whole film could have been. I mean, it was like, it, it was, they were, they were trying to do too much and, 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 and felt at pulling anything cohesive off. Uh, I think they could have either had Lord, Lord's, he was just basically a, a glorified, a, a, a walking MacGuffin that yeah. they could have easily had just put that, that whole story away and just really, they could have just used the talent, the, the, the stone, the thing itself, and just not even have had the whole storyline with Maxwell Lord in there because it, it, it did, it did God bless Pedro Pascal. I mean, it just shows again how an excellent actor he is that he took what material they gave him and actually pulled that character off in that film. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I know. I was I was thinking about that too. I mean, I should really be cringing anytime he's on the screen. And yet I'm like, nah, it's Mando. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> be Mando. He'll do the right thing in the end. I'm, that's fine. Yeah. He, they really should never touch his hair, but whatever. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I, yeah. I I think that um that point is also true to what they end up doing with Steve Trevor. Mm -hmm. um, where full, f f there are moments where this whole him coming back, him being her wish work mm -hmm. because the, he really is the love of her life. And, yeah. and they make it, they spend so much time making it clear to the audience, hey, Diana is celibate. Diana has not had a boyfriend in 70 years, even mm -hmm. though she looks like Gal Gadot, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think even then we're, like, stretching our, yeah. our ability of disbelief. You're like, are you, seriously? You've never, <laughs> huh? Like, you, yeah, I'm sure. Um, but, but, and then to, I, I also thought it was a clever idea to tie in her losing her powers mm -hmm. because of that wish. So she can't be the hero that he essentially died to make her like yeah. in, in a way, like his yeah. sacrifice is what propelled her to become the hero. She is mm -hmm. I, like all that worked. And then you suddenly remember the rest of the world can't, isn't seeing Steve Trevor. That's nope. a bit weird. Yeah. Also, why is it that Diana only works when Steve Trevor is around? <laughs> yeah. Also, why can he fly everything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was very convenient that the plane was filled up. It was, uh, yeah, he, you know, he, the last thing he flew was seven, something 70 years ago, and now he's able to fly this, this jet. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can suspend disbelief for to a point. <laughs> I mean, I like that. I like that scene in the moment, and then I yeah. start to think about the scene, and I'm suddenly like, oh, why? Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the whole body thing. I mean, I, you know, I, I I couldn't help but think about Quantum Leap and uh, Sam Beckett jumping from person to person, and uh, but. Uh, I am. Um, Kevin Smith said it best. I'm pretty sure it was even um, either Kevin Smith or Mark Bernardin because they they did their review and I was yeah. listening to it, and they they just explained he she essentially raped him. Yeah. Saw him at the end, and and he she didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> He also seemed very put together for basically having lost a few days of his life. Also, why isn't anybody saying, hey, thank you for saving the day? Because Steve Trevor was following Diana around through the White House and yeah. all this other stuff. And nobody could see Chris Pine's blue eyes. So, nope. so <laughs> what, yeah. what happened? Yeah. I mean, it was a clever trick. I, I see what they were trying to get there, but it, it, again, but it it just shows the weakness at, uh, uh, of of this, this of this film. I mean, just I mean, and and it's it's not that you're being over. We're being overly nitpicky. It's just basic storytelling. Just making sure things just are just logically consistent throughout, and in, in telling your story, and 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 and, the, and I think that's. I mean, ultimately, that's what causes this film to fail. Yeah. And it's amazing because of how long this film has been, been in production. Mm -hmm. You've had and, time. And I yes. will... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was, yeah. I was just going to say, um, and I will be one of the first to say, as soon as it was over, I was like, thank God this is on streaming. Because... Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, to your point about how long this film it, it has sat on the shelf, and it, you, 
you could have you've had time to tinker with it you could have you know i mean i, I know they you know all, obviously all these films are always shown to test audiences and you know and, and all so you, you had time to do some do some cuts maybe re-edit it in certain ways but you know but at the end of the day I, even at, that being said, I, it, I think there was just so many flaws within the story itself that even if you had tinkered with it, I don't know if it would have made it a better product. Exactly. Uh, you, you're, you're, that's the exact point of this and takeaway that it's, it's for, here's another example. I've now seen Tenet three times mm-hmm. and a part of me if I end up watching it again, it wouldn't surprise me because for whatever reason, every time I watch that movie, I pick up on something else. As long as you watch with subtitles, watch with subtitles. Yeah. But, but I re- I remember when I was first watching it, I was like, I kept overthinking things and, and I wasn't, it, it fell flat and yet I've rewatched it and it gets better with every experience. I, I think this movie gets worse mm-hmm. with every every time you rewatch it because it allows you more time to think about what's actually going on in the lunacy that is going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is such a shame. Yeah. It, it really is. Um, because, yeah. Am I surprised? No, because I had low expectations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, for, yeah, I, I know whenever we had our rewatch, we were, we were like, well, we'll see. <laughs> and, yeah, and the thing is for me because it seems like the DC films were getting better. Uh, the I, I really enjoyed Shazam. I actually enjoyed Aquaman. Aquaman was my least favorite of the characters that they have had on the big screen recently. But I but I actually liked that film. Uh, and when Wonder Woman three comes out, you know, I will, I will, I will watch it and hopefully. Patty and Gal have learned. Uh, Pat, you know, Patty will learn from this film and realize and and, and 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 learn from it. I'm not worried about. I mean, I think she's smart enough of a director and storyteller that she will be able to look at this objectively and see where she where things just didn't, you know, weren't executed or the vision, you know, the vision that they had, you know, clearly didn't come through. And with the next film, we'll correct it. I'm not worried about what she, with with her being with Rogue, Rogue Squadron or anything like that. I think you know, everybody, you know, but I, but I, it's a, when I said it's a shame, I, I do feel that way because the first film was so good, and especially having rewatched it recently, and just all the just the positive you know, things that's that came from it. Uh, as far as just culturally as well, so so it's disappointing when the second one was such a letdown. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to be more critical of Rogue Squadron when it comes out, just because um, I'm starting to notice a pattern with Patty Jenkins. I honestly felt like people gave her too much credit for the first one. So and now to see this and to know how involved she was, I'm like, okay. All right, well, we'll see how you do with a different franchise and then also the third one because we know Wonder Woman, yeah, this is a bad movie, but so was Suicide Squad and Suicide Squad got a sequel. Yeah, true, true. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Um, Anyways, we do have uh, something else to talk about. Um, Another kind of controversial, but I guess I'm in the minority because I really... (laughs) Buys Cobra Kai season season three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I actually I, I enjoyed it because I just took it for what it is. <laughs> I took it I took it for what it is, but y'all y'all are just drinking drinking the um the Kool Aid on this your nostalgic Kool Aid on this, yeah. and I know you weren't a fan of Karate Kid, but still nostalgic Kool Aid. <laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah, I freely admit it. Uh, I think, I mean, it, it, well, go ahead. Uh, you, you start. You start. Okay. So I've thought long and hard about this. 
Took me one day to binge this entire season. Thank the Lord. Um, it all boils down to one thing. Mm. Sam. Sam is one of the worst for two characters on television I've ever True. seen. And to the point where it just makes me angry. <laughs> <laughs> because I compare it to how bad Laurel Lance was written on Arrow. Yeah. And we all know how passionate I am about that statement. So just imagine. Um, the, it just, it gets under, it frustrates me so freaking much. Because... I was watching it and I'm seeing like all of these tie-ins between Danny and what he learned under Miyagi and, and how they are using these flashbacks to, for her storyline. And it all would have worked, Will, and I swear to God it would have worked had I had any empathy for her PTSD. Yeah. 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 Which I didn't, because if anyone's watching this show, it is always Sam's fault. <laughs> like, she is a big instigator, and it just drives me crazy when she then has these sob stories to her parents about how, well, I just, I, I'm tired of being bullied. Sam, I don't think she was bullied at all in that she 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 was defending others who were bullied but i hate this idea like sam you're you're popular like people like you and now mm-hmm. they're afraid of you because they know you can do karate what are you talking about like i'm tired of being bullied you're not bullied yeah you're you're in a situation where a girl is mad at you because you stole her boyfriend you yeah. need to figure that out <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a good point. That's that I can't. I, 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 I no lies detected there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I think I was. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I, I hear what I hear that point, and you know, I think uh, one of the things that it took Ali's character to tell Danny and, and Johnny that they're more alike than they are different. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that's another thing. Difference between Allie and Sam. Allie is actually a good character. Mm-hmm. Sam is a horrible character. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's night and day. Allie, you, can, you have sympathy for. She's caught in the middle. Sam, you're just like, girl, what are make up your mind. Stop r- crying to mommy and daddy and yeah. playing victim. Playing victim. Oh, my God, how many times did she play victim? Yeah. It's just, Sorry, well, you, you had me start, and now I can't stop. So go ahead, I'm, go ahead, <laughs> preach, preach, preach. <laughs> so frustrating that <laughs> nobody is talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> preach, preach. You're right. I, I, listen, I I did not like Sam either. I, I don't like Sam. I I think uh, of the characters in, in season three, uh, and even in the prior seasons, uh, with how she. You know, plays these flirty, flirty games with with Miguel, and then of course um, Johnny's son, um, Robbie. Robbie is you know is you know the, is there you know too, and yeah, I mean, I she she's not she's very uh, not a sympathetic character, and 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 I guess that's the kind of things you know even thinking back to the original Karate Kid, I I I didn't really like Danny's character, you know mm-hmm. when I. In the originals, I, I I was never a big fan of him. I, you know, not that I was a big fan of Johnny Lawrence either, because I mean, hell, he's you know, he had his issues as well. But I mean, fast forward to 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 this current series, I think it even doubles down why I, you know, I, you know one with Sam, but also even more with with Danny. Why I didn't, you know, when I saw these films first go around why I didn't like this character to begin with anyway. And I, and I see it even more so as an adult and, and, and somehow a little bit sympathetic to Johnny, especially when you see what he, he had to deal with, not deal with, but what he, you know, his perspective on things. And, and, and I think that's what I, what I did like about the first season of the show of, of Cobra Kai. And, and it, it's to sort of see, how and, and, and over the over the course of the three seasons, how Johnny has 
has has grown and, and changed. And I think that's why I still that's what I liked about this season. Uh and in particular and, and why I did enjoy this season was just to see how Johnny has evolved. And yes, it's you know, of course it, it does fall into the usual tropes where the the former bad guy now is like come around and now they're unified to go after the true big bad increase but uh but but i but i like that evolution of uh, johnny you know to me has been is a very sympathetic character whereas danny to me is not he he's on the redemption road yeah and everything that they do with johnny i think most viewers um are on board with because he he's a flawed character Mm. who is being redeemed through this series and so he's that undergar underdog um and and what's nice is they kind of what they did is they set him up um with very similar situations um to how we met danny in the original film series of of not having a lot of money um having these other problems exist he he doesn't really know his son, even though he wants to, but he also never really figured out how to be a father. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm, I agree. Like as, as much as Sam is the weakness in this series, Johnny's the strength. And, yeah. and I am always going to be on board with watching this show just because I want to see this redemption story come through um, I do have another problem with this season because I really, the, you could have predicted the finale within the yeah. first episode. Yeah. And I also, because of the way it ends, I feel like it's half a season. <laughs> <laughs> it's really annoying. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then other things they did, they, for for all of the Easter eggs and the tie-in, tie-ins to the series that they would give you they they also gave you miguel basically recovering from breaking his back within the matter of weeks um, which is yeah um (laughs) robbie being placed in i think juvenile detention but but they try to make it appear as prison i don't know (laughs) on the run from the cops but still being able to get out within the course of the season, I really don't understand any of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, these kids are like ninjas by, you know, by the end of second season. Now they're like masters. In the third. But I could buy into that. I, I, I kid you not, Will. Like, we, we, we have both watched season two. Season two, everyone started picking up that the kids are the weakest points of this. And it's not because of the bad acting. It's because of bad writing of just the cliches and the melodrama of it all. Mm, yeah. But I, even, I bought into the school fight. I was like, ah, I, I'm totally fine with it. And then they add, like, you could have continued that ninja like which they did in the season but then they sprinkle in these other things and suddenly i'm like whoa 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 this is a night wonder woman 1984 let's let's take it back a bit you we can only suspend so much disbelief here yeah yeah true true uh what did you think about the the whole crease backstory no, oh, I fell asleep during those episodes. I don't care to know about <laughs> I really don't. I, I'm i actually, I think, I, now that I'm thinking about it, I believe why those episodes didn't work for me is because he is such the stereotypical villain. Mm-hmm. And, and the only, that, and they really need to make him, they, you can't have two redemption stories. Like, yeah. Like you have Johnny and you have this relationship between him and Danny and those two characters work so well off of each other that you need crease so you can, Mm -hmm. you can force them to finally come together. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yeah. But why we don't need to know why crease is the way is to do that. We could have actually spent a ton more time with Johnny um, or even Allie. We yeah. got 
only for like an episode or two. Yeah. Um, or even Dan. Well, Danny got his Japan adventure, which I didn't mind. I do. Uh, I don't mind. Again, all of the tie-ins that they did, all of the nostalgia mm-hmm. to the original film series, yeah. could have worked. And I would have been on with everyone else drinking the nostalgic Kool Aid, but for whatever reason, I'm the only one who really <laughs> got stuck. <laughs> with the other Sam, shit. <laughs> yeah, Sam did it for you, and it just went down here from there. Uh, yeah, I, I I like the I like the tie-ins going back to, to go with Johnny and my Daniel going back to Japan, and 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 then again learning. From because you know learning from the the person he fought in the in the second film, um, and how all that how that all unfolded. So yeah, I mean, yeah. So there's definitely a nostalgia piece, and there's definitely you know those things, those bits and Easter eggs do work. Uh, you know, again, you just have to just sort of roll with it that you know these people, these kids can you know become black belts in a matter of just a short period of time. Uh, and, and you're right. There, there were several, several redemption stories in, in this, in this, in this season. Not only, I don't know if they were, I don't know if they were trying to do a redemption story with Kreese. I guess there were, it was more maybe trying to flesh out why he is the way that he is. Cause I thought the other redemption story clearly was, um, uh, spiky hair dude. Um, Hawk. Hawk, yeah. Um, you know, there was there was that one, but um I don't know I don't know I don't know if I completely agree with you that Crease is a redemption story. Well, I, I no, no, that's a fair point. Maybe I said it wrong. Maybe it's not that it's the redemption story, but it's that thing that they they do now. Um, where it's oh, you think this is a bad person. Well mm-hmm. let us let us tell you the origin of your villain, you know, yeah, yeah. because you want three dimensional villains and, right. and people just being bad, which, and again, you, you could have spent all that time flushing out these poor kids because mm-hmm. another character who gets disserviced is Tori, right? I think that's yeah. her name. Mm-hmm. She, she actually, every, what, what Crease does for her, that is that is pretty screwed up. What the situation she's put in with her yep. mom mm-hmm. and having this this grimy guy, and yet and and yet she's the villain to Sam, who got an arm scratched. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and, and maybe you're right. Maybe they're just doing an exceptionally good job. To make me despise Sam the way some people despise Danny in the first one. Yeah. But I I I think she has to be a little bit likable. And and to do that and doing all this stuff with Tori, where by the end of it, she really is kind of the queen bee of Cobra Kai. It just yeah. I don't I don't know. They could have spent more time with her giving her more opportunities to um, for others to finally understand her perspective. Mm-hmm. But towards the end, it felt like they were rushing to conclude the season. So they just had to make her very bad. Yeah. Yeah, they did. They did. I mean, she's, she's definitely like the, I guess the, the new Johnny of, of the original in, in, in this particular series uh, for, for Cobra Kai. Yeah. Which, and and maybe they'll they'll change it because because that's the point. Um, yeah. The show is all about perspective. And, it is. And everyone's a hero, but everyone's also a villain in their own right. And um, so maybe next season we'll have more of a heroic story for for her. But um, I I think they could have done that this season and maybe decrease the. Crease history lesson. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I did feel that it was a bit. Um, yeah, you're right. It was trying to give us some depth about his motivations and why he is the way that he is. But 
Um, but it, 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 it didn't. Yeah, it fell flat. It fell flat for me. It did. Uh, as far as like trying to, you know, give us trying to add a, another layer to to this particular character. I don't, I don't think it was. You're, you're, I agree with you. You could have easily used that to that those minutes on other other characters to flesh out their current motivations, especially with the kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beyond beyond the beyond the contrived melodrama that they 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 have they have set up with the various factions on the show. Oh, but that's all they want to do with those poor children. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's no. true. <laughs> yeah, we'll see in season four. I mean, I'm still I'm still on board with the show. Two of the three seasons knocked it out of the park for me. This last one, I. I j- and maybe I'm just feeling overcritical of things right now um, because content, especially over the last few weeks, has been few and far between. Yeah. Um, but it just, I, I guess I'm also a little bit tired of everybody just focusing on the obvious positives and not really, un- not really recognizing that there's this other fair amount of the show that actually didn't work yeah very much like wonder woman 1984 in the moment you're like oh cool i get it blah 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 but then you start to think about it and suddenly it's like yeah there was really no motivation and where the heck are the cops (laughs) yeah yeah really yeah you have the ambi pampy like uh city council who were like we're gonna ban all karate events and then they have this impassioned speech by like Miguel and Sam and us to, to no, we need this. And then I was like, "Thanks, kids, but sometimes you got to be the you know, we got to be the grownups in the room to protect you from yourselves." <laughs> right, right. You're gonna we're gonna um, see see a bunch of articles come out about how people stopped enrolling their kids into karate because of Cobra Kai. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. You don't want you to become a ninja and then feel like you can go to a carnival and, and jack yeah. a bunch of kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for us tonight. Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. You can find me at S-J Belmont, S-J-B-E-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Cena Nerd for us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, but most importantly, rate, subscribe, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>